Hey, this is Sule Morvina, and tune in to The Relay for the latest news in boxing all around the world. Thank you for supporting myself and other female boxers. We truly appreciate it. Welcome to the motherfucking Relay. We're covering today's top boxing news. Ow! Is um, a unification fight between Nina Hughes and Ebony Bridges a necessity for Matram, or can we see both of them have vol voluntary defences in between? I mean, it should be a necessity for them, really, not Matram. I want to unify every division in women's boxing whilst we can. So Nina has actually a mandatory against Jamie Mitchell next, called by the WBA. Um, and Ebony has a mandatory coming up, but will probably have a voluntary, maybe even in America, in early November or end of October. And then I'd like them to fight next. You know, you've got Forsland against Luna coming up in a couple of weeks, a really good fight. And then those two should fight, and then they should fight for under... Nina Hughes, the reigning WBA bantamweight champion, clomped wind of Eddie Hearn's comments and responded by saying, It's been a necessity for me since I won the belt. I'll keep pushing on and face anyone that is put in front of me. When my time is done, no one can say I ducked anybody. I understand the sense of urgency that Nina Hughes feels. Nina Hughes, an unbeaten fighter, an unbeaten champion, ain't the youngest fighter around. Ain't no spring chicken. A startling revelation that she will have to face former WBA champion Jamie Mitchell of the United States for a second time. She won the title from Jamie in what was supposed to be a title defense. Ebony Bridges is supposed to have one in November. That's what he said. Presumably a voluntary. The name of a country woman, Avril Mathy, almost immediately comes to mind. Avril Mathy, who was an actor this past weekend, I believe it was in the Dominican Republic, rebounding off the loss to Ramla Ali. She effectively did that. She's back in the winner's bracket. And I could see Ebony Bridges versus Avril Mathy being staged as a voluntary title defense. So I don't imagine Nina Hughes is at all happy about that, but Ebony is coming off that hand injury and the subsequent hand surgery for that hand, and she's easing herself back into activity. It looks a lot like Ebony's only gonna fight once this year. Nina will have fought twice, the title defense, her maiden title defense back in June against then unbeaten Katie Healy. She may have to fight Jamie Mitchell for a second time. And I'm going to assume they'll schedule that fight before this year is out. Though what Nina wanted was to hurry up and unify titles with Ebony. There's only one unification match on schedule in the women's bantamweight division. Just one set to go down before this year is out between reigning champions Dina Thorsland and Yuli Hang Luna. It's supposed to go down real soon in Dina's neck of the woods. And Nina, Nina wanted to have a unification match of her own. Don't blame her. I understand the sense of urgency coming from Nina Hughes to hurry up and make big fights happen, make big things happen in the sport of boxing while Ebony Bridges, she hasn't fought this year, not yet, but she has been seen palling around with Conor McGregor keeping a face out there, keeping people talking about her. Yeah. Comes with a price. Even if she's not the most experienced champion at the weight, and she isn't, if she's not the most long-reigning champion, she makes up for it by being the most talked about, the most familiar face, the most recognizable fighter, champion, at 118 pounds. But that paints a lot of targets on her back. Nina Hughes is already gunning for her, and the winner of Hughes versus Mitchell too, whoever it is. Tack on the winner of Thorsland versus Luna. I'm gonna be gunning for her too. The bottom line is Ebony Bridges is still the most sought after fight, the most sought after fighter at 118 pounds. And the longer it takes her to come back, the more people she's going to find standing online single file to take what she's got. They're waiting for her. Reigning champion Nina Hughes and former champion Jamie Mitchell. If she beats her, if she avenges the loss in what is set to be their rematch, she was in action earlier this year in March opposite the ring Lindsay Garbot. Won a majority decision. She's back in the winner's bracket and I'm sure She'd like to win her old belt back. Can Nina Hughes hang on to the WBA title? Can she repeat her performance? I think underneath it all, this is what Nina was worried about. That if she don't strike while the iron is hot, and she don't have that unification match with Ebony Bridges, she may find herself so confronted with other formidable fighters, other formidable opponents at this weight. She may have beaten Jamie Mitchell before, but there is a question as to whether or not she can beat her again. And that's why she wanted to hurry up and have that unification with with Ebony, but it would have been less than ideal for Ebony coming off of that injury and that surgery to go straight into a fight with another champion. So I understand Ebony's plight as well as I understand Nina's. She's got to ease herself back into activity. She's got to ease that hand 
back into activity. And don't forget that she's breaking in a new trainer in David Caldwell. She's not with Mark Tibbs anymore. That partnership, that professional relationship has ended and she's got to work on things with David now. So, you know, it would have been less than ideal to go straight into a unification match under those circumstances. It's unfortunate it's taken her this long to get back into action. Eddie Hearn said she won't be back in action until November. That's the end of the year. That's the story and that is the lay of the land at 118 pounds. Men's heavyweight news. The pros are weighing in on this weekend's big heavyweight title fight. Otto Valin says Usyk is the better fighter, but Dubois is a big heavyweight and a big puncher. You could spit in the wind and hit a guy who's a big heavyweight and a big puncher in today's heavyweight division. There were lots of guys like that. What's supposed to set Daniel apart? Heavyweight contender Otto Valin expects a solid test when Oleksandr defends his IBF, IBO, WBA, and WBO heavyweight titles against mandatory challenger by way of the WBA, Daniel Dubois. Dubois. Usyk and Dubois will collide on Saturday night in Poland. I think it's a good fight. I think it's nice for Usyk to fight in Poland next to Ukraine. It will probably be nice for him to have a lot of Ukrainians there who want to see him. It's nice that he brings the fight there. He has to have had all of his fights really abroad in different countries, but now he gets to fight pretty much in his backyard. I'm sure it's a big motivation for him. More like the neighbor's house. More like the neighbor's backyard. Poland is neighbors with the Ukraine. Ukraine and many Ukrainians have sought refuge in Poland as the war with Russia rages on. So as you can imagine, there will be a rather large contingent of Ukrainian fight fans in attendance to urge their man on. Alexander. I think Dubois is the underdog, of course, but he's a big guy, a big heavyweight. He's a big puncher. So you can always give him the puncher's chance to win the fight. But I think that Usyk is, of course, the better fighter. And he looked great against Anthony Joshua, Valin said. But you've got to remember, too, that he didn't look that good with Derek Chisora and Chaz Witherspoon, which was his first fight with the heavyweights. So we'll have to wait and see how he looks in this fight, but of course, Usyk will be the favorite. Usyk is a guy that fights anyone, really, and I like that about him. So I think he'll probably take this fight as long as it would make sense, and he would be paid enough. Well, the fight with Chaz Witherspoon was Usyk's maiden voyage to the heavyweight division, and that was some fights and some years ago, as was the Derek Chisora fight. That happened in the bubble before the crowds came back during the shutdown. Now, most people point to that Derek Chisora fight as a fight where Usyk looked relatively human compared to other fights that he's been in. But Derek Chisora, you know, Daniel Dubois, he's not a carbon copy of Derek Chisora in terms of height and length and build and execution, how he goes about fighting a fight. Derek is a far more experienced, far more maturated fighter than Daniel Dubois. I think that goes without saying. And his gusto, his grit, his moxie, Derek's got the kind of stuff that you really can't teach. The kind of stuff I'm not sure that Daniel Dubois has, if I'm being honest with you. So even if you feel that Derek made Oleksandr Yusuk look a little bit more human than some other guys, do remember, Daniel ain't Derek. Derek's got that fuck it in him. Case in point, they asked him after the Gerald Washington fight if he's ready to retire, and he insists he's not going to retire, he's going to keep fighting. I think he said he's got something like two more fights left in him. Derek's made out of different stuff than Daniel. For me and my money. You know, Otto Valin is basically giving Daniel a puncher's chance, little more than a puncher's chance. It's what Otto has to say about it. Veteran fighter, now retiree, David Price says Daniel Dubois is tailor made for Usyk. He's the perfect opponent. Yeah, I don't think David was as gracious as Otto with his evaluation of the fight and Daniel's chances. He's saying that he's tailor made for Usyk. Well, I think Usyk is an example of someone who has had to take the big cake for that fight because at the end of the day, he's fulfilling his mandatory obligations against a dangerous fighter in Dubois. In Tyson Fury's case, for example, would he have picked Dubois as an opponent as a voluntary opponent? Probably not, Price told Betway. And as far as the fight goes, I think that Dubois is made for Usyk stylistically. He's the perfect type of opponent. He's not very quick on his feet. He's an explosive, massive puncher who's always going to have a puncher's chance. But for somebody like Usyk... Usyk, who's so nimble and so mobile, I think he'll bamboozle Dubois. Also, he'll be exhausted later on in the fight because he'll be having to move that much and react to everything that Usyk is throwing his way. That's right. You often hear about Usyk's agility, mobility, that he leads off with his backhand 
and that he's got fast feet and fast hands, good timing, good angles, but another one of his finer qualities is his innate ability to drain his opponent's energy reserves. He gets these guys really tired. You don't notice it at first. David continued, I always try to look at both sides of the argument because, you know, Derek Chisora pushed Usyk in a very tough fight, and although Dubois is a different type of fighter, boy, can he punch. So, although I'd have to say that Usyk is the favorite for me going into the fight due to the stylistic matchup, I do think that Dubois could turn out to be a potential banana skin for Usyk due to his punching power. So all anybody ever says about Daniel that he's big and he can punch. You could have said that about Derek Chisora. You could have said that about Anthony Joshua. They're big and they can punch. Daniel's big and he can punch. But does he really have what it takes? to unseat Oleksandr Yusik as this division's unified champion and Ring Magazine. Don't forget, and I don't think so. Hasn't had enough time with Don Charles. He's coming off that ACL injury. He's got bad knees, this kid. Well, he's big, but he's not as athletic and not as nimble as Anthony Joshua. Doesn't have the same snap on his punches either. In spite of that, Dubois' trainer, his new trainer, Don Charles, is confident. The minute we corner Usyk, the fight is over. Easier said than done. I'm going to be arrogant, Charles said to the Daily Mail. If Daniel Dubois is hitting him the way we envision, Usyk will not survive it. Trust me on this. I've trained Anthony Joshua. It's not publicly known. I worked with AJ before the Olympics, and he hits hard. Joshua is a phenomenal puncher, but Dubois' power is unmeasurable. The game plan is no secret. Dubois needs to jump on Usyk's arse. His arse? That's the way Brits say ass. Got it. If the Daniel Dubois that I've trained for the last 16 weeks is successful, successful in the first five or six rounds, Usyk will not be in a good state because Dubois hits differently. You know, it's hard for Don to sell this idea that Daniel's power is immeasurable when he shares a common opponent with Anthony Joshua in Kingpin Johnson. You want to know what happened? I'll tell you what happened. What? When Kingpin Johnson fought Anthony Joshua years ago, Anthony stopped him in two rounds. That's all it took. Two rounds to stop one of the most notoriously stubborn and seasoned journeymen in the heavyweight division. It only took Anthony two rounds to stop him, whereas Daniel, Daniel didn't stop him at all. Went to the cards. Went to full ten. So we're, uh... Daniel's power being immeasurable? Yeah, I don't know about that. Quite simply, you have to pressure Usyk. Similar to how Derek did, Don Charles said. You don't box Usyk, you have to dog it out with him. Once you get into that zone, you have to commit. In football, when you got a skilled footballer, you don't give him space, you chop him down. You mark him, you barge him, you foul him, making him comfortable. Usyk is a skillful player. You can't give him room to do his thing. Take him out of that zone and break him down. Easier said than done. As far as maulers and brawlers go, you know, that kind of aggressive, gutting and gritty fighter that's more Derek Chisora than Daniel Dubois and if it didn't work for Derek who's more used to that style whereas Daniel would just be experimenting with it on unsteady legs need I remind you this kid at only 25 years old he's got bad knees <laughs> nah I don't trust Daniel Anthony Joshua was very apprehensive when he had the chance and didn't close the show he didn't want to guess and didn't trust his defense Daniel Dubois gets him in that position he would be doomed I've seen what he does his knockout rate suggests that when he smells blood he goes in for it we've got the track Usyk don't let him escape make the ring smaller don't follow him around if he goes one way cut him off keep him in one half of the ring and trap him Daniel has the energy and punch and punch and punch I believe we've got the perfect game plan to halt this guy because the minute Daniel corners him the fight is over yeah and I believe Don Charles is the right trainer for the job more than Daniel's the right fighter for it I have no doubts Don Charles might have the right game plan for Oleksandr Usyk but whether or not Daniel can actually execute it, that's another story. The plan seems to be throw punches and bunches and wear the guy down, but the more you open up, the more you're open. Open to be hit, open to be countered, open to be hit with shots that you don't see. And those are the ones that take you out. Usyk might take Daniel out on Saturday. If Daniel's knees don't end up taking him out. Oleksandr Usyk stated, this is not the final point of my career. This is just the beginning. You know, he still wants that undisputed title fight with Tyson Fury. Who's set to do little more this year than participate in a circus fight with Francis Ngannou. That's the only ring appearance he's going to make. I think it's easy money for Tyson Fury, Usyk said to BBC. Sport. I think for me it looks a little bit strange to me. Too strange. A guy who is the WBC heavyweight champion, instead of fighting a guy from the top 10, suddenly chooses the guy as his opponent coming from the UFC. 
for, and Ganu this is cool, but for Tyson Fury it isn't. Your perception and my perception are different. You treat it like it's a show. I treat it as an athlete. If he chooses this way, okay, I respect his choice. And it very much is a choice, because Tyson Fury had a choice to fight an actual boxer, an actual pugilist. He's choosing to fight somebody that's never boxed before. For obvious reasons. His rationale, it's not hard to understand so much as it's hard to stomach. This is the guy that tried to convince the world that he's not a businessman, he's a Spartan. But the only sense it makes to share the ring with Francis Ngannou is business sense, because in the sporting sense of the word, there's nothing sporting about it. There's nothing sporting about boxing a guy that never boxed before. As far as himself, Usyk stated, no, it is not the final point Usyk said I am 36 but this is just the beginning I started boxing at the age of 15 it's just the beginning now I do realize there are not many years left for me in boxing and I don't want to spend much time in boxing I want to take my kids to school and whatever he's 36 now and he started boxing at age 15 that means he's been in the sport for roughly 21 years as an amateur as a professional jointly he still wants that last brass ring and I can't say as I blame him to have come this far to have moved up to heavyweight become a unified end ring magazine champion there and all he needs is that last brass ring all he needs is the wbc title the green belt to complete the set complete the collection but tyson fury is a notoriously difficult guy to deal with and in my opinion it was always his intention to sabotage this fight despite of that Usyk's promoter vows to do everything possible to get fury in the ring fury who immediately after the dillian white fight over a year ago bought none other than francis Ngannou into the ring hinting at a fight with him and look at who he's fighting now francis Ngannou. after things fell apart with Usyk and fell apart with AJ. You think that's a coincidence? I don't. It's our obligation to deliver this fight, Krasiuk told BBC Sport. The whole world wants to see this fight, not just ourselves, the people involved in boxing, but the whole world. People who know nothing about boxing would love to see the heavyweight undisputed fight for the four belts for the first time in the four belt era. I can promise you and promise all the fans around the world that I will do everything that can depend on me to make this fight happen. Frank Warren is the promoter of both Fury and Dubois. Daniel Dubois is Frank Warren's last line of defense against the beating that Tyson Fury's image has taken in the public eye. Frank, like everybody else at Queensbury Promotions, is hoping that Daniel Dubois can perform a miracle this upcoming Saturday, a magic act, pull a rabbit out of a hat by delivering one of the biggest upsets the heavyweight division will have seen in recent memory. Warren strongly feels that Dubois' youth and size and power will prove to be too much for Usyk. How's it gonna happen between Fury and Usyk when Daniel wins, Warren said. I think our man beats him. Our man beats him. And if he beats him, then Usyk is out of the picture. Then we'll see where we go from there. Well, I'm sure he'd love nothing more than that. He'd love nothing more than to cut Usyk out of the picture so the undisputed title fight at heavyweight becomes an in-house affair between Queensbury Promotions fighters. But his wishful thinking, his dream, relies on a guy that has next to no head movement, shaky punch resistance, Resistance, knobby knees, shaky knees, breaking in a brand new trainer for the first time under the hot lights against the best fighter that he will have ever fought, experimenting with a new style. So needless to say, when Frank says this stuff, to me, it's little more than wishful thinking. That's all it is. I know that the heavyweight division has a bit more spontaneity than most any and every other weight class because at heavyweight, you're really always one punch away, just one, from getting stopped, from getting knocked out. It's that puncher's chance we've been hearing about so much. That's what Daniel has. A puncher's chance. It's the same chance Derek Chisora had. It's the same chance that Anthony Joshua had two times and it didn't work out. So I don't think it's gonna work out for Daniel. Sorry to say.